Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Taboo Marketing, the video blog that exposes the whole truth about marketing. My name is Delia and this is Elmira. We're actually sisters, both marketers and here on a mission to unmask the most common yet unspoken realities that marketers face. Today we're going to talk about something that I think all of us marketers are aware of, probably think on the back of our minds, but never seem to openly discuss with anyone else and even amongst ourselves, marketers. And that being a short lifespan of a marketing leader at the same company. So today we're going to share with you some statistical data that show average number of a tenure of a marketing leader. We're going to contemplate of possible reasons of why our lifespan is fairly short and we'll also going to brainstorm on possible ways what we marketers can do to try to extend our lifespan at the same company. So whether you're a CMO or a marketing leader or on a strong path to become one, this would be interesting to you. So grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and let's get right into it. So I've been in marketing for over 10 years and have definitely seen a trend of marketing leaders changing jobs quite often. I constantly see this life cycle of marketing marketing teams changing every two to three years in my experience. I never really gave it much thought until recently I came across my LinkedIn updates where one of my connections who is a senior marketing leader got replaced. So of course I had my own guesses and my own thoughts about the reasons why marketing leaders change jobs so often, but I wanted to find some data that shows the average tenure of a marketing leader, so I did some research and this is what it showed. The average tenure of a CMO at the same company is three and a half years, and that's actually the shortest tenure of the whole C-suite, compared to 7.2 years of a CEO and 5.3 years of a CFO. And of course, we've all seen last year where high-profile companies such as Johnson & Johnson, Lyft, and Uber eliminated their CMO positions. And when you look at the industry verticals, for example, I looked into technology because that's what our background is. It actually seems that the average tenure of a CMO at a technology company is actually under two and a half years. And in Silicon Valley, it's between six months and 18 months. Don't you find it crazy? Can you imagine looking for jobs every six to 18 months? I find it pretty crazy. crazy. When I share the findings with you a few weeks ago, were you surprised about the data? Like when I shared that with you, what did you feel like? I was actually very surprised about that uh, because in my experience, it takes about two years uh, and about three years in a larger company to make a real marketing impact. You need to learn about the business and the industry. You need to familiarize yourselves with the products. Um, you need to get that historical data, uh, which is a lot of times unavailable. And uh, we know that you need this to, um, to measure your successes against you. Uh, you need to build and organize your team and uh, uh, your process, which is really important as well. And you need to build that infrastructure to um, track your results. And we know in our uh, world today, the ROI and uh, marketing impact on the revenue, that what matters to higher management as well. Um, and of course, you need to produce a good content um, that will help you to support the programs, which takes time. It all takes time. So I was wondering, did you find why the lifespan of a marketing leader is so short? Uh, did, is there any findings on that? Yes, I did do some further research while I had my own thoughts and guesses as to why our lifespan is fairly short. I wanted to see what other people are saying. So while there is no hard proof and no hard facts as to why our lifespan is fairly short, there are a lot of contemplations on why. And the biggest one being the ability to show tangible, immediate ROI. So it's all about ROI measurements. It's all about ROI proof. It's all about showing ROI for your program. Programs. And as you said, it takes sometimes in a company more than two years to see your marketing plan come to fruition. And of course, with these expectations of you showing the proof of your work in less than two years becomes challenging. And speaking of expectations, another reason for the short lifespan is increasing expectations of a CEO. 
So CEOs seem to look at this new role of a marketing leader as a magic bullet to increase sales, to improve market share, to inspire customers. And while that's all good, some of those expectations seem to be unfair quite often. The third reason being is there seems to be this natural evolution for marketing to move from creative thinkers towards more data-centric and customer-centric with so much information and data available to us about our customers, we're expected to deliver a personalized experience these days in both B2B and B2C. Strategies like customer segmentation seem to be kind of outdated today and it's all about the personal experience delivering to every single individual. And the last reason that I came across is this devolution away from centralized marketing towards product marketing. They're really closer to the money. And the earlier examples that are used of those marketing leaders from Johnson & Johnson and Uber and Lyft, their positions weren't replaced. They were eliminated and their responsibilities were redistributed to other marketing teams in the company and product marketing being one of them. So based on all this research and all the reading and all the findings that I came across, I started thinking, did I get myself into the wrong field? I never thought to do any research about an average 10 of a role when choosing my marketing career and I think that I'm great in marketing and I really love what I do but the synopsis of changing jobs every two to three years does not seem really promising to me what do you think do you think our field of work is slowly becoming extinct no I actually don't think that our field of work will ever go away Gartner survey predicted that CMOs would spend more on technology than CIOs by 2017 and this was presented as a proof of increasing importance of the CMOs function and their ability to spend uh, bigger budgets. So it seems that the trend is actually working in the opposite direction. From my experience, I actually see more and more CMOs and marketing leaders being hired, which proves that marketing is becoming an inevitable part of the business with all the digital and online world arising every day and I think companies need more and more marketers who can put them in line uh, with this evolving evolution and also uh, get them up to speed with all the new ideas and tools. But on the other hand, all this marketing evolution does not really guarantee us a long-lasting job even when we get hired. So based on all the stats and findings, what can we do to ensure that we have a marketing future? So should we be prepared to change our jobs every two years and keep our resumes fresh at all times? And when you find that perfect job or you already have that perfect job, what can you do prior or during your time in the company to make everyone happy, especially higher management? So here are the five tips that we thought of to help marketers extend their lifetime at the same company and to help us evolve and adapt to this new marketing world. The first tip is setting realistic expectations with a CEO or the hiring manager before you accept the job. So when you're going through the interview process and talking to different people throughout the company, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. So besides asking generic questions like what my KPIs are going to be, ask them how many SQLs will I be expected to deliver? What percentage of the pipeline will I be expected to generate? Is it 30%? Is it 50%? And most importantly, what are my resources going to be? What's my budget going to to be like, how many people will I have on the team? So you can then take that information away and evaluate on your own if the results that you will be expected to generate are reasonable with the resources that you will be given. The second tip is getting closer to the product. Long gone are the days when marketing people could just generically speak about the product or the solution and they would leave all the in-depth conversation and knowledge to the salespeople. So if you're the marketer and you can deliver the product page better than a salesperson or you can answer customer questions just as good as the sales guy, you should start practicing your elevator pitch. The third tip is all about data, campaign data, performance data, customer data, you name it. And if data is not your strongest suite and you tend to concentrate more on marketing communications like a lot of marketers still do today, 
while start educating yourself. Find that data, slice and dice every single piece of it, and analyze as much as you can, because every single click, web visit, or unsubscribe matters. And if you can tie that all to ROI in dollars, and ultimately the company revenue, guess what? Your executive team will be your biggest fan. The fourth tip is finding a specific industry niche. If you're like myself and have worked for a number of companies and for various industries, you might want to rethink that and find a specific industry segment that you are interested in and you might want to be an expert in. So besides being a marketing expert and having all the extent of knowledge and expertise in marketing, you now become this hub of knowledge in the industry and you can produce stronger marketing material, you can improve your messaging because you know a customer a lot better, and it's harder to replace you when you have all that expertise and you become a lot more attractive to other companies in the same industry. And the last tip, be prepared to evolve every day. With technology, customer expectations are evolving, our lives are evolving, and so do our jobs. We can complain about our short lifespan all we want, but the reality is that our are also changing and so we should be prepared to change as well. So take one to two th courses a year to expand your skills and overall learn something new, be that uh, Google metrics or new marketing automation approaches or product management or whatever that is that you need to add to your portfolio and increase your market value. So that's pretty much what we wanted to share with you today and that brings us to the end of the video. We here on Taboo Marketing Channel strongly believe that to be informed is to be equipped. So what are you going to do with all the statistical data that we've shared with you today? How are you planning to adapt and evolve to today's marketing world? Or maybe you're a marketing leader who's managed to stay at the same company for a long time and can share, can share your secret ingredients and your tips and tricks of how you've managed to do that. We would love to hear from you. We genuinely believe that by bringing these types of topics to the surface and by having open discussions, we can create a lot more transparency about our roles about the whole marketing world and real transparency as we all know always leads to better results thank you so much for watching this video if you like our content here on our channels please use the feature below to subscribe to our videos so you can stay up to date with our latest and greatest content and we'll see you in our next episode thanks everyone have a great day thank bye you. bye And the last tip, be prepared every day. Be prepared. <laughs> we can complain about our life, short span, short life span. What's wrong with me? Life. We can complain about our life. <laughs> Let's not complain about our life. Good. Yeah.